to port! Yesterday's gale seemed like a dream under today's calm seas and blue sky. Where the rest of the crew vanished to, one can only guess. But Gulliver awoke to find himself alone and safe beneath a friendly sun and on a quiet beach. Still exhausted from fighting last night's waves and reassured of his safety, Gulliver soon dozed off again. This? It looks like a band of mini-soldiers. That's right. Gulliver had sought refuge on an island inhabited only by tiny little people, the island of Lilliput. <laughs> Gulliver slept well enough, and when he awoke... Huh? Gulliver found himself tied from head to foot. He couldn't budge. But what really shocked him was to see all the Lilliputians running around all over his stomach. Huh? Who are you and why did you come? How dare you disturb the peace of our land? Ah! Ah! My name is Gulliver, and the waves carried me ashore here last night after my ship capsized and sunk. I mean you no harm. Won't you release me, please? Never. Well then, I guess you leave me no choice. Uh. I'm sorry, I mean you no harm, but I haven't had anything to eat or drink since yesterday. Could you bring me something? If you don't, I'll surely die. What do you say? So hundreds of Lilliputians were sent scurrying over the countryside to gather up food and drink for the giant. Why, in that tiny land, a loaf of bread was scarcely as large as a grain of rice. But by and by, Gulliver's appetite was settled. The Lilliputians had been so generous and friendly that Gulliver agreed to lay quietly and not cause any trouble. The Lilliputians decided to carry Gulliver into the capital so that they could present him to their king. But moving that man mountain was no easy task. It took hundreds of Lilliputians, hours and hours, to roll him into the city. Finally, to everyone's relief, they reached the capital. The Lilliputians were exhausted. The Man Mountain is every bit as big as I had imagined. The king had never seen anyone or anything so large. Highness, I am happy to report that we have tamed this Man Mountain, and you have nothing to fear from it. Well, in that case, why don't we just go up and take a look around? But you're the one who just said he had the Man Mountain tamed. My name is Gulliver, and I am at your service, Your Highness. On behalf of the people of Lilliput, I would like to welcome you to our peaceful land. The king was fascinated, and he and his minister wandered all about the Man Mountain's body. Suddenly, it began to rain, sending the Lilliputians scurrying for cover. Why, just one drop of rain was large enough to drown them. And up on Gulliver's stomach, the king and his minister were desperately looking for cover.
Please, Your Highness, let me offer you some shelter until this storm blows over. I don't think it'll last long. Yes, that's very kind of you. After his kindness, the king had no choice but to grant Gulliver his freedom. He also gave him permission to wander freely throughout the land. You are free to roam our land as you please. Just be careful not to step on any of our houses. I understand. Perhaps you'd be kind enough to show me around. Ah! Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. We'll get used to it. I'll be more careful. And so Gulliver went on a tour of the capital, a city seemingly built out of matchboxes. Gulliver grew to love his newfound friends and land. I appreciate that very much. Help! Help! We're being attacked! Our enemies have launched their whole fleet against us! What? They've caught us by surprise! We have no defenses! We're helpless! Help! Help! Have no fear. I think I can handle this. Just lead me to where you expect them to attack first. Do you mean it? With your help, we are sure to win, and our enemy will think twice before ever attacking us again. And so it was that Gulliver volunteered to help the Lilliputians defend their land. The enemy ships were already sailing into the harbor. Gulliver slowly and secretly went underwater in order to take the enemy by surprise. Of course, they had no idea that a man mountain would be helping the Lilliputians. Can you imagine their surprise when such a man monster rose up before them? Their tiny arrows were of no help against Gulliver. He soon hooked all of the enemy ships together and began to reel them in. Hooray! Hooray! Yay! Yippee! Oh! We're saved! We're saved! Oh! Gulliver, you have saved our land. From this day forward, we will always be in your debt. If there is any way we can ever repay you, you need only ask. The Lilliputians were overjoyed. The king ordered all of his people to prepare a great feast to honor the Man Mountain. Gulliver loved the Lilliputians, but something was bothering him. Hmm, what's the matter, Gulliver? You barely touched your food. Is something bothering you? Not really. It's just that I've been thinking about returning to my own country. What? You can't mean it. Not after we've become such good friends. You can't leave us just like that. If it was up to me, I'd stay here with you forever. But as you can plainly see, if I stay here much longer, I'll have eaten all of your food. Of course, Gulliver oh. was right. There was nothing the king could do with Gulliver around. Their food would not last a month. Your Highness, I have only one request. Please lend me the materials and tools to build a ship so that I might return to my own home. I'm afraid what you say may be true. Okay, the least we can do is make sure you have the best ship on the sea. Thank you, Your Majesty. As the king and his minister went sadly into the castle, Gulliver felt the tears coming to his eyes. He knew they might never meet again. Under the king's order, all of the carpenters and shipbuilders gathered to build the giant ship. Working day and night, they were finished in no time. And so it was that Gulliver set sail from the island of Lilliput. Farewell, my friends.
goodbye. After several days at sea, Gulliver was picked up by a passing frigate. As they set sail for England, Gulliver knew that he could never forget the kindness of his little friends across the magic sea.